Hi there, I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be my second video about the TBR Clearout Readathon, which I am using as an excuse to read through the Penguin Little Black Classics box set. The four books that I read this week were interesting in that one of them was something I had read before, one of them was something that I had expectations about, and two of them were things that I had never read anything of that era from that place before, so that was really interesting. The first one was one that I have read before, and that was Jonathan Swift's essay, A Modest Proposal. This is very famous. This is his You Should Eat Some Irish Babies, 18th century satirical essay. I remember reading this in high school, and people talk about this all the time when they're talking about satire, uh, so I don't really have anything else to say about it. I think the most interesting part for me was that I did remember more of this than I thought I did, considering that I read this probably 25 years ago. So yeah, that was more memorable than I thought it would be, but having read it before, I don't have anything else to say. Next up, I read Friedrich Nietzsche's uh, Aphorisms on Love and Hope, some of which is very funny because he does have kind of pithy sayings about, it says blasting maxims on revenge, false pity, and the drawbacks of marriage, but it's actually pithy sayings about revenge and the drawbacks of marriage. So I was not sure what to make of this. I had an interesting conversation with my mother about this, because she read a lot of Nietzsche at one point. Uh, yeah, I was talking about stuff I read 25 years ago, stuff that she read uh, like 50 years ago. So this was this is one where I felt like not having context made this weaker, and I think if I had not known anything about this or the framework around it, I would have been even less impressed. As it was, I was mildly amused because I mean, some of the things are kind of funny, some of them are not things that have aged well necessarily, but you can see how they would have been funny at the time. But I think if you're looking for deep philosophy, this is probably not the work of his that you want to pick up. So it was an interesting choice for a set like this, where I think the idea is to give people a taste of something that they haven't read before. So yeah, interesting, but a weird choice for a set like this, because uh, I don't know how representative this would be of his broader work. And I feel like that's the point of this, is to give you a taste of these things. So after that, I read Pu Song Ling's Wailing Ghosts. These are Chinese ghost stories from the late 1600s. I had never read any Chinese ghost stories from the 17th century, so this was new to me. This reminded me a little bit of the stories from the Decameron, in that you read it and think, yeah, people enjoyed base humor hundreds of years ago. They were still people. Yes, we get that. But at the same time, I did think it was funny that that's something that survived. And some of them are traditional ghost stories. Some of them are clearly stories where somebody got drunk and thought he saw a ghost, but was actually hallucinating or dreaming or something. Some of them are cautionary tales about why you shouldn't spend all your time at brothels getting syphilis. So this was entertaining, but I don't know that I'm going to go out of my way to read more from this particular era because of this. So I would call it reasonably successful because I did have fun reading this, but if the goal of these is to inspire you to find other things to pick up, probably not. And then finally, I also read Three Tang Dynasty Poets. These are 8th century poems from China. They are written by Wang Wei, Li Po, and Tu Fu, who all lived in the 700s, which, you know, a very long time ago. I thought a lot of this was interesting. It play, these play with a lot of nature imagery, but I did think that this is clearly a case where having notes, and again, these books do not have notes, would have served this better because there are clear references in here that this was more than a thousand years ago and this is translated and I think both of those things mean that notes would be really enriching. So I am curious to read more poetry from this era, uh, so I would say this is a success in that it grabbed my curiosity, but I don't know how satisfying this was on its own because I did, but I did sit there thinking this is referring to things that I don't have the context to understand if there's more meaning to it or not. But I think that's successful in a way because letting you know what you don't know is, I think, worthwhile. So in terms of making me curious to read more, success. I will read one of these. This is called The Sailor's Wife. I with my hair fringed on my forehead, breaking blossom was romping outside. You rode up on your bamboo steed, round garden beds we juggled green plums. Living alike in Changkan village, 
We were both small, without doubts or guile. When at fourteen I became your bride, I was bashful and could only hide my face and frown against a dark wall. A thousand calls not once did I turn. I was fifteen before I could smile. Long to be one, like dust with ashes. You'd ever stand by pillar faithful. I'd never climb the Watcher's Mountain. I am sixteen, but you went away. Through Chutang Gorge, passing Yenyu Rock, and when in June it should not be passed, when the gibbons cried high above you, here by the door are farewell footprints. They one by one are growing green moss, the moss so thick I cannot sweep it, and fallen leaves, autumn winds came soon. September now, yellow butterflies flying in pairs in the west garden. And what I feel hurts me in my heart, sadness to make a pretty face old, late or early coming from San Pa. Before you come, write me a letter to welcome you. Don't talk of distance. I'll go as far as the long wind sands, and etc. This is quite a long one, actually. So yeah, I was intrigued by this. Um, so I would call that successful because I think that's what these books are for. So if you've read more 8th century Chinese poetry, I'd love to hear which poets and what your experience was and what translations you've enjoyed because I'd be curious to hear more about that. Anyway, I will continue to work my way through this series, even though that readathon was just for April, so it's technically over, but this is going to be an ongoing project, I think. Anyway, that's it for now. Ciao.